What's up, witches? It's Witch Angel Nakora, and welcome back to Hive Swap Friends Sim. Ugh. Stealth's route. It made me think, because it was actually really, really cute, and my brain was like, wait, Tizius? Is that the otaku? Is that the anime lover? And then I went back and I'm like, no, that's Tagiri. Now it was a guy, and then I realized, hello, Tizius is a girl. She's basically studying to be a legislator. So yeah, that's where my ADSC popped in. But enough of my jibber jab, let's go back into this. Back into volume 13. And Boulder, let's go with you, honey. You look adorable. <sighs> you just aren't feeling it today. You're getting more and more of these great nights recently. Nights where the call of the street, but infinite ramble for companionship just sounds exhausting and meaningless. Also, if you notice over there, there's the um, 2 by 3 prong symbol of the contest. Yeah, days like this back on Earth too, when getting out of bed just didn't seem worth it. The sun is just beginning to slip over under the horizon. Usually this would be a sign of rising shine or rising dark. But all you've managed to do so far this evening is make yourself some coffee. You recently me mentioned to Tagora that you drink instant, and he was so disgusted that he gave you a coffee machine. He claimed it was an old one he doesn't use anymore, but it still had a price tag on it. On the table, a palm husk caramel had taken off dead kids freshly for you, and cradled in your hand is a mug Skyla scent. It looks like she painted it herself. There's a white blob on one side you, supposed to, you think is supposed to be lady. You're even wearing the hoodie Malik gave you to cut the evening chill. Here you are, wrapped up in the warm embrace of your friend's goodwill, safe and sound, but deep inside you festers something. A gnawing existential dissatisfaction. The classic angst the, phil the philosophers wrote about. Your palm husk chimes and you pick it up lazily. What, another rando trying to slide into your DMs? Sorry folks, you just don't have time for that anymore. You're a friendship connoisseur, a sommelier of the rarest of amicable, amicable vintages. You'll have to screen find a message. Psst. I'm not sure if this light is secure. Actually, a possibility that it isn't. I'm missing contact because it is imperative that we speak. I'm sending you rendezvous coordinates. If you wouldn't mind coming anytime after the sun set. I realize this isn't orthodox, but please believe me when I tell you that this is not a trick or a trap. I have important information regarding your place on Alternia. You have to attempt to reply to the message, but there isn't a cursor or anywhere to put input text. In fact, there doesn't even appear to be a messenger app open on your phone. It's just a random text box floating in the void. You barely have a chance to read it all the way before it vanishes and a gorgle map opens with an address already programmed in. It's close enough to walk to, which is great, because using your stolen skull buggy still makes you a little nervous. You swallow the rest of your coffee and grab your shoes. Oh, we're in the coffee shop! Okay. Your GPS leads you to a shop you sort of recognize. It's a cafe from your weird sort of day with Lanera. It's not too crowded at this time of day. The usual studying crowd doesn't seem to be here. A couple trolls are sitting around sharing pots of tea. Full freaking idiot. I explicitly stated that I wanted essence of day glow, not whatever these garbage is. Oh, you know this person? It really has been a minute, hasn't it? Hey, Ardata. One of my favorite trolls. Ardata stands in front of the counter, shutting its cash, cash register. But her automated system runs the shop has apparently gotten her order wrong. What are you looking at? Hmm? This is obviously none of your... Oh, it's you. Ardata swiftly covers up her surprise, examining a sharp, perfectly shaped nail. You will look... different. Better? Let's not exaggerate. I simply meant you look less like toxic waste and more like run of the grain grinder garbage. You tell her daughter that it's good to see her too. Yeah, this really takes you back. You've been so simple back then. So unevolved, you were laser focused on a single desire. Friendship. Now, yeah, well, you still like friends, you really do. But you also have like a car and a sweatshirt, sweatshirt with someone's sign on it. And you've moved up in the world. 
Fascinating. Oh, by the way, is she the only summon you here? <laughs> summon? You? You must be joking. I haven't spared a single solitary thought for you since you dragged your wretched carcass out of, out of my hive. Absolutely, you push your hand into the pockets of your hoodie. Some crinkles between your fingers, you pull out a folded piece of nookie paper. Okay, this definitely had been in there when you left your hive. You passed a couple people in the street, but you definitely don't remember any of them, any of them getting close enough to slip something in your pocket. Huh. It was said two words. Out back. Oh man, should you go? Uh, go, go, go! Let's be real here, if you were ever going to refuse a suspicious invitation, you would have done it by now. You would have drawn the line at vehicle theft or murder church or anime club. No, I wouldn't. I would actually go to anime club, thank you very much. You can't resist social engagement, your tragic flaw. <sighs> okay, I guess. Enjoy yourself. <sighs> you head back through a, a, a be a cart, half expecting an alarm to ring. How do they keep people from robbing stores here? Are there just like lasers and stuff? Oh, this is pretty. You emerge into a tidy little back garden. None of the plants here are ones you recognize from Earth, but it's still nice. You cross a bridge over a flow, slow flowing stream and you find yourself looking down at a path that blooms into a tight, dizzying spiral. Maybe you're supposed to walk across it and ponder your place in the universe? Your contemplation would be inevitably cut off before it hits the climax because someone is sitting at the center of the spiral. She's a short, she's a small, compact shape with her hair cut short and choppy around her chin, wearing a shapeless white dress. Really more of a rose. I'm waiting for you. Thanks for coming. She speaks in a stage whisper, low and full of air, but still loud enough to hear across the path. You make, you pick the way carefully across the spiral, making sure not to mess any of it up, treading only inside the lines. The girl gives you a small, secretive smile. My name is Balder. You ask her if this is her garden. Does she live here? It's nice, but it's not exactly out of the elements. It actually looks like there's some storm clouds rolling in. You probably have to get, probably have to get rain soon. Oh yeah, my recruit coon's over there under that tree. She smiles again, and you can't tell if she's messing around. In fact, she is totally unreadable, like her face is a t like a totally reflective surface and all you're seeing is a cloudy sky in the garden. Can't tell how she feels about you at all. Would you like to sit down? Inside the circle, or...? She looks around like she's just only realizing that she is in the center of a complicated geometric pattern. It doesn't matter. I wanted to see if you had followed the path of Trample Garrett. Didn't either. Before showing where you you can't preserve that which has come before. You ask her what that means. Hmm. Maybe nothing. I'm not sure. The wind tosses her hair and the clouds chase each other across the sky. If the rain comes, it will come soon. Older continues to look at you as you shift awkwardly and shiver, pushing your hands into your hoodie. This is different than any other friend me up you've had. Even with the others who purposely sought you out. There's a serenity to Boulder that all the rest lack. Or maybe that's just this zen as frick garden getting to you. You try to remember what Boulder said to you in the message that she somehow managed to make appear on your phone and then suddenly self immolate. That she has some sort of information for you about your place in Alternia or some crap like that. Did I say that? I guess I did. I just. Oh. I suppose I wanted a chance to talk to you a bit before the end. I was starting to feel a little, um, jealous, maybe? Right, you guys, everybody has been going on about the dumb, fun and dumb alien robot has been crawling the countryside. No, that's not it. No, I'm sure you're very funny. I found a, t a chance to talk to you. Some people are drifting their soul of faith in the whims of the paradox. Wait, paradoxes? Fate? I'm pouring a glass of water here because, um, hold on. <sighs> this girl, I like her. She's 
talks about existentialism and finding your place in the cosmos. Uh huh. We're gonna get along very well. <clears throat> paradox? You don't know anything about paradoxes. Well, you know what they are, but you don't, just don't see why they're relevant. They aren't. Paradoxes aren't relevant by their very nature. It's the essence of that nature that makes them so integral to the story. You shake your head. You're not built for this cosmic stuff. You're just an orphan, orphan from Earth with quick fingers. For spaceships and apparently vehicles. Boulder gives you another sly smile. Oh, quick fingers? You blush. You hadn't meant that as a dirty joke or anything. Hey, if you want to hear a good, a good dirty joke, go watch Rosbowski, DA Games, or John Robertson, because those three are masters of dirty jokes. Like, really dirty jokes. <laughs> or if you want something a little dirty but subtle, Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, Cub Scouts, Bijou Mike. Anyway, Bijou makes more clean, but he still throws in the occasional dirty joke. Also, your fingers are nowhere as quick as hers. She still had a piece of paper in your pocket while you were standing in a cafe and she was back here. It's like reverse pickpocketing through astral projection. Oh ho ho. I'm a witch and I astral project quite often. But gotta be careful what I cast up, otherwise you're gonna get lost and not return to your body. <coughs> Boulder laughs. She stands up and moves across the garden path, following the spiral so swiftly and efficiently that she might as well be floating. She drifts over to one of the trees, pulling a coat down from where it's slung over a branch. Oh, it's so cute! It covers her from chin to ankles, coming together to form an all green symbol on her chest that looks like a question mark without the dot. A broad brimmed hat finishes out the ensemble. But I can't teach you astral projection. The pickpocketing is actually quite simple. Would you care to learn? I feel like we need a third person actors to the mark. I think we can make it work. More crime, huh? Um... Sure, let's do crime. This whole mess started with a theft of a spaceship, and if Boulder was right about all that fate horse crap, that was supposed to happen. So maybe you'll lean into it. Perfect. The first and most important aspect of the art of is staying unobtrusive. You think about mentioning that walking around in a great big coat and floppy hat is not the most unobtrusive thing that you've ever seen, but you are the expert here. Also, you're an alien thing so we're gonna have to talk. Maybe if you get a big coat like that yourself. You just love ripping looks off of all your friends. Boulder takes you through the bases of criminal sleight of hand, and on the whole that you aren't too bad. In fact, you might have a future in it if you weren't already on the career path of professional friendshipper. You don't know what this has to do with her lear learning about you or teaching you about your place in Alternia, but it's fun and Boulder's a good teacher. But there's just one thing this journey has taught you is that when something isn't actively painful or destructive, you just write it out. You don't think you'd be going around pickpocketing many trolls and of them have already wanted to kill you, but it's good to have the skill to reserve if you ever need cash fast and don't feel like hitting up any of your rich friends. You wonder if Boulder uses this for anything besides passing notes. My source is telling me that you've been on Alternia for almost three peregrines now. You have no idea how long a peregrine is, but what the hell, sure. It's like a month. Impressive. No wonder. She trails off thoughtfully and shakes her head. You wish she would say something with just a little substance to it, but, just, you know, instead of vague nonsense. But at least she's, she isn't threatening you with violence or trying to stick wires into you, so you're counting this interaction successful so far. Also, you feel, feel weirdly chilled out with Boulder. Sure, you want to be friends, but there's none of that stomach churning, spine bending desperation to make sure she likes you at whatever the cost. You feel more awake than you have in weeks. Man, you gotta learn to learn pickpocket in a garden behind a cafe more often if this is what it does to suit your stress levels. Why'd you get something to eat? Or you just copy, because that's what they serve here. Sure, you could use another caffeinated beverage on top of the other caffeinated beverage you had earlier. Why not? You'll sleep and you're dead. If only. <laughs> you follow her out of the garden and back into the cafe. <laughs> oh, 
is this now? He has another friend. Oh, Ardanta, you're still here. Of course I am, fool. You were back there for about ten minutes. Ten minutes? Wow. You have way longer than that. You guess you underestimated the good power of a good training montage. <laughs> He introduced Ardata to Boulder with the cheerful earnestness of someone who has forgotten the systematic classism of the planet in which they currently reside. Ardata stopped him with an aristocratic sneer. Stop, stop, before I have to stop you myself. I absolutely have no desire to mix with those so low on the social ladder. What in the world could she have to offer me? You shrug. You know, that's sure, maybe friendship? You know, friendships between people of different castes are possible. You've seen it happen. Regardless, you feel bad for exposing your newest friend to the vaguely non-sexual abuses of your oldest. You turn back to Boulder to apologize and find her gazing coolly at Ardata like she could do it all night. There's none of the fear of irreverence or false obedience. You've, been, you've seen other low bloods display the blues. Sid Boulder looks at Ardata like she's a bug. Worse, a pebble that she would just love to kick out of the way. Psst. Nice to meet you in person, Miss Carmia. I hear your GrubTube channel has been losing subscribers recently. I wonder why that is. Blue hits Ardata's cheeks in an angry flush. I am currently on hiatus. The old garbage is getting tired. I have so many limited that my own content is starting to seem derivative. She gives one of her little maniacal laughs, but it's a little less robust than usual. Man, the wild tundra of internet fame really is a stark and arid battleground. Yep. In fact, I have a new feature in the works as we speak. She holds up the little files that she's been haggling with the cash register over earlier. Poison. I think the best and ex most expedient process would just be to sell my featured guest food and then hide the antidote somewhere in my hive. Unless you have another idea. She smiles, slow, sly and mean. Boulder smiles back just as vicious. Great, have fun with that. A boulder talks, so her eyes start flickering to you, to Ardata, and then down, again and again, you, Ardata, and down. It takes, another, it takes a couple of go-rounds before you realize what she is telling you. She keeps looking down to your hands, which are stuck in your hoodie pocket, exactly where you found the note boulder slipped you. Ardata is carrying a bag that looks expensive and extremely goth, and you can see where the vial of poison is sticking out. Oh man, you know what you have to do. When a group comes into the shop and pushes past the three of you, you move in on, on our daughter and slip the hand into her bag, palming the cold, smooth vial. She gives you a weird look, like, why are you suddenly all, all up on me, peon? But she doesn't notice the theft. I suppose I'll be going now. And if I were you, I would be more mindful of who I chose to associate myself with in the future. You say bye to her, feeling the tiniest bit guilty. She's planning to use this poison to do murder in theater in a prison basement, so you don't feel that bad. Take care now. Her daughter leaves and the boulder takes an inquisitive step closer. Psst, show me. You open your hand to display the, spo display the spoils, flushed with criminal euphoria. Oh. Oh, hell no. You grabbed the wrong freaking vial. This one's blue, not red! You grabbed the antidote, not the poison! God, you honestly thought you were moving these past of cock-ups. Oh, damn. Well, at least you have the antidote now. You never know when one of those might come in handy. Uh-oh. <sighs> she sways forward and clutches at her neck. For one confused second, you think she's doing an impression of someone who might need an antidote, then she falls to her knees. You dart forward and catch her before she could totally eat it. She's heavier than she looks. Compact muscle and a coat full of ungodly number of weapons. She has like four guns in here. What the hell? 
Your eyes are full, so you can only watch. Help us as a troll in a hood that covers their face and their horns book it, books the other door. You shot that some fricker just stabbed your friend, but no one here is looking at you. I'm just the same way on Earth might ignore a mother trying to call a toddler throwing a tantrum. Just turning their eyes away from a distasteful public scene. Ow. Damn it. You put a hand up to Boulder's neck to try to stop the bleeding, but there isn't any bleeding. Bewildered, you pull apart the lapels of her coat to see a tool drop of olive blood trembling above her collarbone. Discoloration spreads in a dark spill over her neck and radiating to her chest. You both say it at the same time. Poison. You open your hand up to look at the tiny blue vial, then back up to Boulder. Her eyes are glassy, her skin going blotchy and ashen. There's no reason to believe that Ardata's poison and the poison the assassin used are the same. The same antidote. It already strains the powers of coincidence to grab the antidote, antidote at all. You're probably right. But maybe you should try it anyway. I can't feel my legs. Right, right. Maybe the mere fact that this is such an unlikely happenstance that means that it'll be the right antidote. Everything you've done so far has had the pull of inevitability to it. Especially all of your interactions with Boulder. Great. Awesome. I'm glad you're realizing your inherited significance this particular micro microcosm of a causation. Now can you please pour stuff in my mouth so I can swallow it and possibly not die? You help Boulder tip her head back and put, put the vial to her lips. At the last minute you wonder if it's supposed to be diluted. The Boulder gulps the whole thing down and immediately begins to shake. Uh oh. Smoke billows out of her nostrils and open mouth and holy crap what is going on? This doesn't seem like any kind of antidote to you. Then the smoke clears and Boulder opens up her big yellow eyes. How's she feel? Alive. Marginally. She lets you help up to her feet. You immediately pull her into a fierce yet gentle hug. It's wild to undergo someone else's near death experience. You know what you feel like you know her way better than one montage of scene work. Another new friend. Oof. Not so tight. You ease up a little. All the tea sippers are staring up at you now. Death apparently isn't interesting, but the possibility of some quadrant adjacent stuff, they are subtly all about. Sorry, assholes! Just you and your new friends touching, sharing a touching po near post fail encounter. None to see here. Didn't die! And yet, she still is kind of sickly in the face. But hey, she didn't die! Oh, that chapter was so cute. And we got to see Ardata again, my top favorite Cerulean blood. Even though she's a bit of a um... bitch. <laughs> anyway, that was volume 13 of High Swap, of High Swap Friend Sim. <sighs> Man, this has already been a wild ride. We've had Stelsa and we've had Boulder. Two cuties, one episode, holy crap. I mean, two cuties, two episodes, ugh. Brain no worky! <laughs> but anyway, ugh, I can't wait for volume 14 to show up. Because volume 13's already been a wild ride. My friend Gabriel, he uh, plays a lot of Hive Swap and Hive Swap, Hive Swap friends and told me that chapter 14's tile got leaked. And uh, we're both theorizing it's gonna be Marvis the um, ringleader troll and the janitor. We really don't know, but we're, we're just going to find out and see. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm going to get out of here. You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button with a big old bibbity bobbity boop and I'll see you all soon. Mwah! Stay magical, my friends. And <coughs> yikes. Don't, don't get near a cerulean blood when they're looking down at you like that because you know something bad's going to happen.